Okay, uh, thank you for this invitation to speak about uh, future high positron colliders. Uh, I'll spend uh, a few words, not many I, I concede on the physics motivation, uh, but then I'll consider the two options in front of us, which are linear and circular. Uh, a couple of slides on, on the uh, ILC, uh, one slide on CEPC, and then I, I, I confess I am a uh, advocate of FCC EE, and this will be the main focus of my talk. Okay, so uh, a future E plus E minus collider is here taken to be a ma machine of, that will enable high precision Higgs studies. Uh, we've just seen all the wonderful things that uh, lower energy E plus E minus machines can do, and these machines will continue. And indeed there's plans for future such machines like the Super Tau Charm Factory. But I'm concerned with machines which will uh, operate for Higgs studies at the Z pole and higher energies up to a TV or so. So uh, I apologize for not uh, uh, in including uh, many uh, sort of reasons why it is acknowledged that this is a, a priority in high energy physics. Uh, my talk is rather short, but taking this as read, for instance, this was a conclusion of the recent uh, European strategy update. There are two broad options under consideration, linear and circular. They have uh, different strengths. For instance, in terms of luminosity, uh, linear machines uh, give you the best value for money uh, above 350 GeV or so, uh, but below that, a synchrotron is your best bet. Talking about polarization, uh, longitudinal polarization is quite uh, easy to achieve for linear machines, and this is valuable for phys physics studies, but uh, synchrotrons have this fantastic uh, attribute that they naturally have transverse uh, polarization, and this is absolutely vital for energy calibration. And another advantage of the circular machine is that you have multiple interaction points, so you can uh, put uh, several experiments there concurrently. So until about five years ago, or maybe a bit before, the linear machine was uh, clearly the front runner. So historically, that made sense. The Higgs could have been rather heavy. And of course, the LHC was expected to discover many high mass uh, SUSY modes that would require detailed study. And unfortunately, we know how that has worked out. But let us uh, therefore talk about uh, the, the front running linear machine, the International Linear Collider. So in its current incarnation, this has a, a, a center of mass energy of 250 GeV, a luminosity of uh, 10 to the 34, and a, a length of uh, 20 kilometers. Now, it, it relies on uh, 8,000 superconducting cavities. So if you were to operate this machine over several years, this is uh, essentially what you would do. You would start uh, at this energy of 250 GeV, accumulating data, essentially HZ data for Higgs physics to look at Higgs couplings. You would uh, increase, you, you would uh, upgrade the luminosity of the machine to increase these data samples. You would then uh, upgrade the energy, which would mean making the machine longer. Uh, to 500 GeV, where you produce Higgs from WW fusion. Um, and you would also uh, make a, a dedicated run to study the top mass. And if you wished, you could uh, do a run at the Z pole, or, or you could raise the energy still higher if you extend the machine still more to a TV or so. The actual uh, design for the machine is very mature. Uh, and also the detect detector studies are also, there are very uh, you know, detailed designs for these two detectors. There's only one interaction point, but there's this uh, rather ambitious scheme that you'd have push-pull operations. So you collect data over time with both experiments. So this has been around for some time and a huge amount of work has been invested in ILC studies over many years. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the TDR, dates back to 2013, already quite some time ago. At that point, the baseline was 500 GeV. And since then, we have been waiting. We've been waiting for approval. And particularly for the proponents, the situation is rather reminiscent of that of the, uh, the, the two tramps in uh, uh, Beckett's play waiting for Godot. Uh, they wait and they wait and they come back tomorrow and then they will come back the day after tomorrow. And uh, maybe the question we should be asking is, perhaps we should wait no longer. Before finishing the discussion about linear machines, we should acknowledge there are other plans on the table. There's the so-called uh, CERN plan B, which is CLIC, 
based on a very novel technology, and this could take you up to really quite high energies. Uh, but this uh, is a project with quite a long time scale. And very recently, ideas have come from the US about uh, things that you know, could conceivably be done at Fermilab based on uh, new RF technologies. But I really would say that these come with uh, a word of caution because there's a very long R&D road ahead. Let me then therefore introduce the uh, FCC, the so-called FCC Integrated Project at CERN. So taken from the top of the Jura in winter, here is the LHC, and the FCC tunnel would be a tunnel of uh, between uh, 90 and 100 kilometers stretching over the Genevois plain uh, behind the Salève and coming back again. This would first house uh, a FCC EE, a high luminosity plus or minus collider, uh, and then eventually you'd install in this tunnel uh, a hadron collider, which could go up to energies of 100 TeV or so. Conceptual design reports were published in 2019. Uh, and then in the, the, the recent uh, European strategy update, uh, uh, both uh, the HH machine and the uh, E plus E minus machines in general were given very strong encouragement and high priority. And now the FCC is undergoing a five-year feasibility study which will conclude in uh, 2025. Before telling you more about that, we should concede that there's a, a, another circular machine under consideration, uh, the SEPSI in China. Uh, the main characteristics uh, closely resemble those of FCC EE. Uh, if you look at the CDR, uh, they were, you know, it was probably uh, less ambitious in design, but uh, in the years since then, it's evolved to something which is quite close to the FCC EE design. Uh, here's some information on, you know, uh, possible timelines. Uh, essentially, the bottom line is uh, if you believe everything you're told, this could actually come into operation 10 years before FCC EE. That means the mid 2030s. But there are many uncertainties, and I would regard this as uh, very uh, ambitious and aggressive. But certainly we should watch closely. Now back to FCC, and, and let's now consider the, the various running points, uh, uh, the luminosities against center of mass energies. And I just want to give you a, a few words about the physics we could do with each of them. The first thing you note is the luminosity. So, so FCC is here in black, uh, uh, going from uh, the Z pole, uh, up to uh, about 365 GeV. And Higgs studies start here at uh, 240 GeV. These luminosities are enormous. They, they go up to uh, over 10 to the 36. And you note that uh, even, you know, even at the, the way you do the Higgs physics, you're substantially above where the ILC will be. It's uh, delivering many, many more uh, Higgs per second. So how do you achieve these luminosities? This isn't a uh, accelerator talk. So uh, I, I, all I'll say is that uh, one is uh, leveraging uh, all the experience, not only of LEP, but of all uh, E plus E minus machines since. In particular, the, 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 the machines of the B factories with their double ring operation and their top up injection. So getting to the luminosities I'm talking about is, uh, you know, it will be difficult, but it's, uh, it is certainly not science fiction. This is in some sense tried and tested technology. Okay, so taking energy points one by one, let's start at the Z. Uh, the idea here would be to take over four years, 150 atta, inverse atobarns. That corresponds to five times 10 to the 12 uh, Z, it's something like an order of 10 to the five above that which was achieved at left. It's enormous. This project therefore is sometimes called uh, Terra, Z, Terra Z or Terra Z. So why do you want to do this? Uh, let's been done before, why go back? Well, now we've discovered the Higgs and that standard model is complete. And the emphasis is more and more on making a precise uh, stress tests of the self-consistency of the theory. And one can imagine with these data, you can make measurements of uh, the parameters which were made at LEP, which we all know are very, very important, within principle a uh, precision, which is 500 times better. Nowhere else, anywhere in particle physics, is there the possibility of making such a huge step forward in sensitivity. So to look at the line shape, for instance, uh, okay, so we're getting so much data, do you really need that data? Do you really need four years of operation? Well, the, the lesson from LEP is, yes, you do, 
uh, making line shape scans is a really delicate business. It's not a year one measurement. Uh, and, and so we need to devote time to this. And certain systematics certainly require particular attention. Let me just pick out one, and that's the uh, knowledge of the collision energy, which is absolutely essential here. So these were the collision, uh, and the, these were the uncertainties from that source, which were the dominating systematic of the Z mass and the Z width at LEP. And the statistical uncertainties, FCCE, will be a 4 kV and 4 kV. So compare that with the MEVs here. So this does not look easy at all. So let's remind ourselves how actually we measure the, 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 the beam energy here. And that's through this miracle of resonant depolarization. So the, in the synchrotron, the beams are transverse polarized and the precession frequency of the beams is proportional to the beam energy. Uh, now, this gives you an instantaneous measurement, which is uh, super precise uh, down to a, a few, uh, you know, at the KEV level. At LEP, however, Resonant depolarization could only be performed in a few fills before and after the collisions. And this is where the problem lay. You've got very good instantaneous measurements, but you then had to track between these measurements. And understanding how things evolved was very, very uh, problematic. One had these effects such as the earth tides, which distort the ring and pull the, the, the trajectory uh, off center in the quadrupoles. Uh, these giving distortions of 10 MeV at LEP, and they would be uh, an order of magnitude larger at uh, FCCEE. Uh, Longer term distortions by the, the water level in Lacrimane, uh, issues such as the magnets uh, rising due to uh, stimulation on the beam pipe from currents from returning trains. All of these were issues. So how can one hope to actually uh, control things to the level we wish at FCCEE? Well, at this machine, in contrast to LEP, the idea of actually doing energy calibration is built in right from the start. And the key idea is rather than making very, very uh, uh, period, uh, very, very you know, measurements of resonant depolarization uh, scattered by uh, weeks at a time, we would do it continuously. We will essentially measure the resonant the energy of the beams continually on non colliding pilot bunches several times an hour. And this removes the first order all the problems we had at LEP. We can also change the RF frequency continually to keep the beams centered in the quadrupoles to actually remove these uh, residual uh, tide effects. So with this approach and with many other issues which uh, we can't go into here, there is confidence that the uh, collision energy systematics can be limited at least to 100 kV on MZ and 20 kV on gamma Z. This is still uh, somewhat above the statistical precision but the expectation is that an even better performance will be possible. Work is in progress. And if you turn to other observables uh, where the actual experimental systematics are uh, much more tractable, for instance, forward backward asymmetry for muons, tau polarization, uh, forward backward asymmetry for B productions, all very, very important observables. Here, you know, the hope is that you could really uh, extract uh, the full power from the statistics uh, that you get from these four years. And then with these data at the Z, there's other things. You can do flavor physics, all this wonderful stuff that's being discussed. You get a, a B sample that would be 15 times larger than uh, Bell 2 ultimately hopes to collect, and, and a sample highly complementary to the LHCB upgrades. Uh, there was a discussion about B to K star tau tau just now. This is a, a, obviously a simulated uh, version of, of the signal one would hope to get at FCCE. Uh, and this is something uh, which is uh, unique to, 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 to this machine. We won't have it at LHCB, and statistically, it lies beyond Bell 2. Similarly, with tau physics, if you want to study lepton flavor violating tau decays, this machine will do it much, much better. And even direct searches, even looking for new particles at the Z, you can uh, do that, uh, for instance, looking for uh, uh, heavy neutral leptons, uh, uh, yeah, Axion-like particles, lepton flavor violating uh, Z decays, uh, uh, with five times 10 to the 12 Z zeros, you get very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, uh, constraints or hopefully discoveries. But we need to move on. Let's talk about uh, this energy, the WW threshold, and also at the same time, the TT bar threshold. Okay, the idea here I, is, is to measure the mass of the W and the mass of the top. Uh, so for the WW, the idea would be to take a threshold scan. This was done at uh, LEP, but uh, with rather low statistics. 
uh, with this and maybe with direct reconstruction, uh, it will be possible to measure the, the W mass uh, uh, at this machine a, a factor 20 better than we know it today. This was always known to be an important measurement, but this has really been highlighted by this uh, anomalous result from CDF. Okay, so to, to make a, a really precise W mass measurement, we really need to go to an electron positron machine, and this is the place to do it. Uh, you know, one of the reasons you want to do that is to perform these uh, closure tests of the standard model, these famous pots of MW against M top, where you compare the, the, the direct measurements with the indirect uh, predictions. So we will improve both the mass of uh, the measurement of MW, M top, as I will show you, and also the indirect predictions. In fact, the indirect predictions have uh, limitations here, which would become uh, uh, crippling at uh, FCCE, but all of these uh, parametric uh, uh, contributions to the error, uh, we will actually be able to uh, measure better at this machine, including things like uh, uh, fine structure constant at the, uh, the, the Z pole. And I can say more about that if you're interested. So the, the, Z, the, the, T, the top mass will also be measured it's similarly in one of these threshold scans. It's at uh, obviously 365 or 350 GeV. And then if you put everything together, this is a rather ugly plot, but it's the same closure plot you saw before. In blue, this is the, the current prediction. In green, this is the current set of measurements. Down here is where you expect to be after FCCEE. So, so in red, the, the, the predictions we will have then, and in uh, blue, the measurements we will have then. And you see the you know, exquisite exactitude uh, of, of the situation that we will uh, uh, hopefully achieve. And of course, we now need to talk about the Higgs. So uh, Higgs physics will take place at uh, really, you know, the, there's two key energies. Uh, the first way you, you produce the Higgs together with the Z, uh, that will be five inverse atabarns taken over probably three years. That will be 10 to the six events. Uh, and then uh, at this higher energy, I will say a little bit more about that, that is WW fusion. Indeed, here you actually see uh, the, the two processes one sees the cross sections against the center of mass energy. Uh, and, and you see, uh, you know, here the, the, the HZ dominates. Here you're getting more contribution from the WW, the Higgs fusion. And uh, these are very complementary. This brings you very uh, useful additional information. So this is uh, one of these uh, publicity tables which show you the, the precision on Higgs coupling for a variety of machines. All one needs to seek the take home message is that you uh, do very well from combining these two energies, that the general precision you get is uh, uh, better than a percent. Uh, and this is very, very valuable indeed. Uh, and uh, uh, combining with what we know from, or we, we will know from the high luminosity LHC, uh, we will uh, know much, much more about the Higgs uh, then than we do now. There's much more I'd like to say about Higgs and I won't, there's no, no time. Ask me afterwards to look in the backups. I'd like to say some words about Higgs self-coupling measurements and something which is very, very tantalizing, very interesting, the possibility of measuring the Higgs u power electron coupling, possibility of you know this, this tiny, tiny, tiny uh, uh, constant uh, uh, at FCCE, you know, this is tantalizingly just or possibly just out of reach but uh, I say no more. Okay, so uh, where are we? What's the status? So uh, what's the status with the experiments, the detectors? Uh, so you might say, well, compared to the FCC, compared to the high luminosity LHC, the detector challenges are really rather modest. There's radiation is not an issue. Uh, event rates will be high, but not as high as uh, at the HL LHC. This is true, but on the other hand, there's a, uh, you know, the precision we are striving for is, you know, unprecedented. And this is driven by uh, uh, the, the, the event samples we'll get at the Z. I mean, in contrast, I'd say the Higgs physics will be easy. You know, we'll need uh, to, to monitor and have stability of detectors and operation and resolution you now at the 10 to the minus 4 level for luminosity, 10 to the minus 5. This is a, a real, real challenge. So there are already, uh, you know, three candidate experiment designs that have emerged. Uh, uh, this is actually evolved from a, 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 something which was uh, originally designed for, for, for click. 
this, uh, this is essentially silicon based. This detector here has a very uh, uh, lightweight drift chamber in the middle. This is a new concept, which is based on a, a Nobel liquid uh, calorimeter. But I should emphasize that these are not set in stone and there's plenty of room for new ideas, optimization, et cetera, et cetera. And the current, uh, you know, what, if you go to the CDR, you will see a design for FCC, which has a two interaction points. I think that we will not remain with this. I, I think we will end up with four. There's many, many advantages with having four. Uh, not least, you will have a, a opportunity for many more diverse detector designs to, uh, to, you know, to, to pinpoint uh, different areas of physics. You see here, there's no detector which is optimal for flavor physics with a dedicated PID or and a crystal calorimeter, for example. And this is an area that where involvement would be very welcome. Now, coming back to the general timeline, there's this uh, feasibility study underway that started in 2021. Uh, middle of next year, there will be a midterm review and it will report at the end of 2025. So this is you know, the, the, the clues in the, in, in the title. It's a feasibility study, really trying to understand uh, whether this project is uh, you know, in terms of the civil engineering, uh, in terms of the accelerator, in terms of the financing, whether this, this is, this is uh, you know, something that can be done. Just to give one, you know, one minor, minor example, you know, a lot of effort is going into actually designing, you know, planning the exact ring layout. I said the machine will be somewhere between uh, 90, 90 plus kilometers. Uh, one needs to, you know, try and plan, uh, position it really precisely such that it, it goes through all these uh, cantons and uh, the access shafts, uh, you know, not interfering with a uh, uh, sort of, key areas of, uh, of civilization, that, 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 that there's infrastructure there, et cetera, et cetera. For a while, it seemed, uh, this was until rather recently, the actual exact circumference of the ring was going to be 91.2 kilometers, which in uh, other units uh, is uh, you know, a, a very good omen because uh, it, uh, it uh, really uh, emphasizes you know, one of the, the, the big physics goals of the project, which is the, the Z run. But I'm sorry to say that I, I know this is being tweaked again uh, and I think uh, we'll stay, stay within the Z mass, the two significant figures, but not three. Um, okay, so we, we need to talk about the, the, the timeline and the finances, and, and this is where things clearly get awkward. And rather than uh, you know, make things up myself, I, I, I quote from the CERN DG, this, there were statements made in uh, June of this year. So, uh, we are running at CERN the LHC and uh, the high luminosity LHC is approved uh, and that will uh, run, you know, until uh, the end of the, the 2030s. And then, then after that, uh, there will need to be a, a breathing space before uh, a new machine can begin operation. Uh, one would hope that this project, if approved, it would be approved before the end of this decade. Uh, so one talks about, therefore, operating FCCE from 2045 up to 2060. And uh, the FCCHH, well, I don't even want to go there, but you, that would come afterwards. Uh, um, and that is, takes us uh, towards the end of the century. Uh, the cost of the, the, the project is, is, is not cheap, but uh, this brings you, you know, two accelerators with, for, you know, for the price of one. Well, the, the tunnel does for sure, and some of the infrastructure. So FCCE, that, that's uh, something like 11 million Swiss francs uh, uh, within these assumptions. So the funding model needs to be understood, and that is part of the feasibility study. So what are the opportunities for involvement, particularly from uh, Indian groups? So I would say that uh, you know, this ongoing feasibility study presents an ideal time to become involved. One could become involved in the accelerator, and I know there was a meeting in this very uh, uh, institute last week where uh, many of the CERN accelerator team came and several possibilities were identified and discussed. In terms of theory, you know, to, to, with the experimental uh, sensitivity we're talking of, there needs to be, I mean, the theorists need to up their game. So those of you who are not working on, uh, on, on the multiverse, I would uh, encourage you to come and do something which um, would certainly be uh, very welcomed by uh, your, your experimental friends, which is to you know, try and uh, uh, improve the, the, the calculations to enable us to follow through this program. And I, I, I give you here a, uh, a report, a, a theory report from a, a workshop of uh, three years ago. 
And then in terms of experiment, uh, one can conduct case studies in selected topics. Uh, uh, there's a whole list of these case studies which we wish to conduct. These will help us con consolidate the physics case and evaluate the detector and theory needs. Uh, we want to optimize the experimental layout, so we call this the detector concept stage. In, again, these are experiments I, I showed you, these putative uh, uh, designs, they, these are just designs on paper. There's a, a lot of room for, for new thinking. And there's R&D in detector technologies. So I, I can give you names, I just include here one of, one of these uh, horrible organograms which show you the so-called physics experiments and detector pillar of the project. Uh, so in these boxes down here, and if you follow up with these names, these are people you can talk to to get involved with this. And indeed, uh, parallel to all this, there's actually, a, it's somewhat confusing, but, but there, there's a, 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 another workshop going on, which is the so-called ECFA workshop, which is pursuing more or less exactly the same things, but in a, a broader context, in a context such that the efforts will be uh, uh, equally useful for the, 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 the linear collider should that go ahead. And there was a meeting in, in uh, DAISY in October. Uh, so there's, there's a, a recent snapshot of this from uh, Aidan Robson, which you can uh, uh, click on. Okay, so I should finish now. Uh, I, I believe, I really do believe that the high energy plus e minus collider is the natural next uh, step for particle physics. The uh, ILC is certainly in, in, in the rather infamous words of Boris Johnson talking about a Brexit deal. It is an oven ready project. Uh, but it's been an oven ready project for some time. Um, and I, I would say that since this became a, a mature project, we've uh, you know, thought more and we've realized that it's, you know, the opportunities are still greater. It's important to make high sensitivity studies, not just of the Higgs, but to take the opportunity to perform studies of a exquisite pr precision in electroweak physics, QCD and flavor. And uh, FCCE is the machine that can deliver this. It's a more ambitious initiative with wider physics goals and is also the obvious stepping stone to a 100 TV Hadron Collider. And now is the perfect time to get involved. So uh, come and shape the project, please. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. The floor is open for questions. Hello. Uh, uh, do you have any projections on the Higgs cubic and quartic couplings? In this? I, a little, yes. Uh, I, I was going to say something about uh, this, uh, at least, uh, oops. This, right? So, uh, so the FCCE will not uh, run at an energy where it will, uh, it, well, it does not plan to run at an energy where it, there will be di Higgs production. Right, that's the first thing to say. I mean, that will be mapped out uh, with the, the best possible precision by uh, uh, the FCC HH with a precision of something like uh, 5%. Uh, this is, you know, this is of the utmost importance if this was mentioned earlier. What you can do at FCC EE is you get an indirect sensitivity, sensitivity to it through diagrams such as this. Uh, and so what you want to do is to measure cross sections very, very well. And if you do that and you combine with the information from the high luminosity LHC on, on this parameter kappa lambda, you, you can get precisions of some like 34%. And you can improve this by optimizing the, the running plan better. You could maybe take more data at this uh, higher point. Uh, and if you go to four interaction points, you can uh, do better again. So if you decide that this is something you really want to go after, uh, then uh, there, there's ways to at least uh, indirectly uh, measure this parameter uh, you know, with, with, with high significance uh, through these indirect means at FCCEE. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is exactly on this slide. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's the thing where you were. Now. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, I, I know Leib had the example of four experiment and, um, you know, very well, like there was this one of them was more flavor ready, what you call a uh, microwave oven ready or, or one in which uh, you're, you're involved. And uh, so um, don't you think three may be a better one, like where you have two general purpose, uh, like Atlas CMS and two, one on three. The, but, well, yeah, my, uh, or is there something I worked more? on LEP and I, I, I always thought that, uh, yeah, LEP could have survived with three experiments. I won't tell you the one which I think we could have done without. Uh, 
however, because just the practical considerations of, of, of an E plus E minus machine, you, you, you have to have two or four, uh, is it threes not, to, I mean, threes, I mean, you have to have an interaction point, uh, you need to have four interaction points or two. So it would be uh, stupid okay. not to equip the fourth one. Yes, yes. So um, this is not a physics question. It was a great talk. I was wondering at the beginning, you, you, you showed the scenarios, you know, we have uh, this thing, but this has to wait until the end of LHC, luminosity. And then in China, maybe they can do it uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. And then there is this ILC suspension. And, uh, I'm wondering, is, is, is it uh, conceivable a scenario in which uh, some of these big efforts decide to, you know, cooperate rather than to compete. I mean, you know, CERN has, has joined forces with Fermilab on the neutrino program. Uh, I was wondering whether it's possible that, uh, I don't know, maybe a CERN-China cooperation on, on just choosing one of the two projects could, could, could be on, on the table at some point, because I'm afraid that otherwise it will, you know, the, Discussion will push this farther and farther in time. Well, you, well, you, you're 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 right on both counts. You're right that this is not a scientific question, uh, and, and you're right that it will push things back uh, if, if things happen like you say. I mean, I could point that there's been very warm, constructive things said, uh, for instance, in, in Japan, uh, which looks like they're trying to maybe back out of the ILC, but but talking about working with other uh, with other nations, with other labs on on other machines. And I, I've seen statements made uh, in, in China that uh, they would be very willing to collaborate with, uh, with CERN. Uh, so yeah, collaboration we hope is the way ahead, but uh, no, at, at the moment, at least within uh, CERN, this, this feasibility study is going ahead. There'll be a, a strategy update in uh, 2026 or 2027. And we very much hope that that update, there will be a, a clear statement from the at least European community is that we want this machine. And uh, I, mean, I think it should be this machine, but uh, it could be another one. Oh yeah, no, here's a senior member of the CERN directorate who will uh, correct me and tell me what I... No, just, just a comment on, I, mean, I totally agree with you, but uh, you know, just a comment on that question is that uh, yes, uh, cooperation is possible. Uh, although not always China has shown great uh, science uh, in that direction, but uh, at the end, you have to decide where you, would you want to put the machine. <laughs> and you can put half on one side and half on the other side, okay? So obviously that is the issue. And you know, you, you made the, the example of dunes, but at CERN, we're just constructing a, a cryostat. And it's, that's very different. The experiment will take place at, uh, uh, in, well, in, in the United States. So that is, uh, is a big issue and that can never be resolved just with collaboration. Rohini? Actually, I have a physics question, but now I thought I will just make a comment based on this discussion. That as far as I can see, I mean, there are big uncertainties with CEPC, but to some extent, there will be some clarity rather soon, if whether China actually selects it for their next five-year plan. And those discussions are, so to say, underway now as we speak. So at least there will be some clarity whether this very aggressive 2030 target will be met or not. I mean, this is just a- oh, No, I, 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 I agree. Adding, I mean, just adding something to the- Thank you. But my physics question, not question actually, may, yeah, maybe a question, is that now it seems, you know, your first transparency very nicely indicated the one advantage that we all used to rave about, about ILC, namely the use of polarization and uh, linear polarization. But now it seems like if one can get those luminosities, then that advantage is, uh, physics advantage is really not uh, there anymore. Is that a correct statement? Yes, uh, certainly for the uh, electroweak measurements, yeah. uh, because you, you, can, uh, you, you can access uh, all information. For instance, the tau polarization allow, measurement allows you to decouple things and, and get directly at what you would uh, 
measure with left right asymmetries with a so transverse pole right with longitudinal. It will be yes. similar to left versus SLC now. Yeah, yes, yes. And, and the, the actual, uh, the, the, the huge, huge advantage in uh, statistics you, had a, you have at a Z0 uh, just offsets uh, anything you can do with the polarization. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. no, comparisons will be SLC versus left and. Yes, I, 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 I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, please. Uh, I, um, you, you, are saying that we will have an answer from China, and that will add information. We'll add information, but I don't think it will be decisive. Uh, whether China puts it in the five-year plan, that's not sufficient. Uh, uh, for, for the community to understand if they will actually ever complete it. And take the, take the example of the SEC LHC, right? I mean, you know, at that point, uh, we could have said at CERN, well, stop the LHC because uh, they will, there's another project ongoing. And you, you would understand what would have been the consequences of that. So I think while CERN should uh, continue, of course, to do the discussions and be very open to understand what's happening in other places in the world, uh, like you know the ILC, we, we've seen a lot of up and downs in the ILC. I don't think that CERN should base the decisions uh, according to statements uh, made uh, elsewhere. I think CERN should go ahead with uh, the program that they consider the most valid and then always be open to collaboration, but not be influenced at the point of changing the program based on statements made in, in, in Japan or China or elsewhere. No, no, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, I just wanted to say that, in fact, what I have a feeling that for CEPC, I mean, right now, the way I have seen the funding model that they're thinking of is where the central government gives very only maybe one third and the rest of it has to come from a from the individual state where it will be based. So there are huge uncertainties. I mean, even worse than SSC, I would say. And I just wanted to kind of say that there is even the funding model is not uh, very clear with them. So I, I basically support what you're saying is that right now the FCCEE seems to be a project that the rest of the world at least as should at least right now decide if this is the best and focus about the polarization we discussed that that was the time any further questions i don't see hands raised so let us thank once again and this session is closed. <laughs>